gripped the trigger of the plastic gun that was attached to the machine. No one paid any attention to me. People were glued to other machines, and others were too busy in the back rooms gambling. I found the place on the dark web, a shady out-of-the-way arcade that no one knew about where dangerous games were played, or so the ad said. Every afternoon, I would come and test the limits of this simple shooting gallery. It was my little escape from reality. I figured that despite how I had found the place, it seemed perfectly harmless. Appearances, I guess, were deceiving. The game itself was pretty straightforward. There are Among Us characters that randomly pop up in front of you. The goal of the game is to shoot the characters before they duck back into the machine. The more characters you can hit within the allotted time, the higher your score is. Aim and shoot, rack up the high score. Every correct hit gives you about 500 points along with a loud ding sound. No matter how many times I played or how hard I tried, I couldn't beat the high score. Today was going to be different though. I could feel it in my bones. Gradually, my score climbed as I shot the characters. My score kept increasing. I'm close to actually beating this, I thought to myself. A few of the other gamers around the arcade started to take notice. I noticed myself beginning to sweat. It's finally happening. I aimed the gun one more time and took out the last character. Suddenly, the music rose to a crescendo and the entire machine lit up. The screen went black and I panicked. Did I do something wrong? Then a moment later, a single word takes up the entire screen. Congratulations. Suddenly, I mattered to everyone around me. I heard a few cheers of approval and I stepped away from the game. I had worked months to beat that score. Having it actually happen felt surreal to me. I enjoyed every minute of it. As I stood there marveling at my accomplishment, I felt a cold hand hit the back of my shoulder. I turned to see the arcade manager standing there. He was wearing a beige blazer with golden buttons and a wave of cigar smoke swirled around his head. His skin tone was about as bland as the characters from the game. This was unsettling to me. Well, well, what a surprise. You certainly have a knack for those kinds of things, don't you, son? He said as he encouragingly patted me on the back. Just a hobby, I said softly. Something about him gave me a weird vibe. Every time he chuckled, his belly fat jiggled. He reminded me of a worse version of my lazy father, someone who always had money and never appreciated it. To my surprise though, the manager made me an offer. Listen, son, I can tell that you want to take this to the next level. So here's what we can do. Come here to the arcade on Friday night after closing. Ask for Arthur. He can show you something I think you will go crazy for, the owner told me. He passed me a business card which had the normal name of the arcade scratched out and replaced by what looked like Norse runes. I told him I would think about it and walked home. A few days passed and it was Friday night. Truth be told, I knew something about this was wrong. Meeting a complete stranger at an old grimy arcade with no one around was a huge red flag. But I loved the intrigue, and I loved playing shooting games even more. So I went. When I parked my bike outside the building, I couldn't help but to feel a sinister air about the place. I had never come here so late. It gave me a very bad vibe. But it didn't deter me from going towards the darkness. The place definitely looked deserted, with a metallic grating in front of the door and all the lights off. But as I approached, I saw the movement of a shadow and a well-dressed man with a wrestling mask appeared. Are you Arthur? I asked softly as I showed him the business card. And then he unlatched the door and ushered me inside the empty arcade. I felt like I was a kid being led into the candy store after hours. All the machines were available to me and I could play any of them. But Arthur turned my attention toward the back door and instructed me to follow. It was a dark stairwell that led to the basement of the building. Willingly, I followed to another even darker room, waiting for my next assignment. In the middle of the room, a series of lights came on, and I saw what looked like a virtual simulation headset hooked up to a massive chair. It was large enough for a man three times my size. You've been wanting something a little more challenging, correct? Arthur asked as he pointed toward the headset. This will be unlike any normal game you have ever experienced. I hesitated to place it on. Virtual reality has always given me a headache and I had a feeling this would be no different. But the way Arthur was looking at me told me that no wasn't an answer. As I sat down in the chair and placed the headset on, I tried my best to get comfortable. The entire world suddenly felt very dark and cold. 
I felt a cold metallic surface hit my hands, what I assumed was my game weapon. And then the simulation began. At first there was nothing, an endless landscape of stars that filled the screen. Then the room filled in with gray colors and an occasional computerized version of a window or a corridor. Then the whole room rendered. I realized immediately that this was a virtual 3D representation of the video game Among Us. How do you get all this accurate info about Among Us? I asked out loud as I guided my character to the center of the map. I didn't hear any response from Arthur and brought my attention back to the game. A display on the right side of my head told me that I was the imposter and that six crew members remained. I met them a short time later in the galley, all wearing jumpsuits and I introduced myself. There was no response. And I briefly wondered if the other characters were just computer bots or people playing in VR somewhere else. You would be surprised what you can accomplish with tech on the dark web. Now go kill the other players. Arthur's voice shouted into my headset. I squeezed my weapon and waited, watching as the other players ran to hide. I ran through the simulated hall searching for blood. I figured it had to be about as straightforward as the arcade version. Aim and shoot, easy. As the imposter, my job would be to eliminate the others and not get caught. I saw a red suit run in front of me. I drew my gun and aimed down the sights. A moment later, he was dead and his virtual blood was covering my visor. There was something unsettling about the way he screamed though. It sounded almost real. I convinced myself it was just the authentic feel of a virtual experience and kept hunting. Every step I took, I could feel my heart beating faster. The virtual world was dazzling to explore, and I knew an enemy could be lurking anywhere. Blue was next. I aimed high because he was taller. The bullet went straight through his skull. He jerked and fell to the floor. Honestly, it shocked me how realistic everything seemed. Amid the broken glass of Blue's helmet, I saw green, human-like eyes. They didn't look simulated. His body looked exactly like a real person. That can't be possible, I told myself as I took his weapons and ran to hide. Two other opponents came from around the corner. I found a place to hide and listened to their conversation. I'm beginning to think this is not a game, Red Suit said. Yeah, I don't think this is a game either. We definitely got drugged and put in these suits, Yellow Suit replied. What are they talking about? I thought to myself. That's exactly what I think. And this suit feels like a cage. It is impossible to take off. How do you think we got here? Red asked. All I remember was pulling up to an old rundown warehouse. I came there for a job interview, Yellow replied. Red said, I don't think the guy in the green suit realizes what is going on. We might have to take him out to make it out of this place alive. My stomach dropped. I realized they were talking about me. There he is, I see him, Red said. I panicked and aimed at them. I sprayed them full of bullets, but Yellow somehow managed to aim at me and fire. The bullet pierced me right in the shoulder. I realized I could feel it, for real. This wasn't just a simulation, I realized, as I started to run. They were right on my heels as I felt my heart begin to beat right out of my chest. I could hear myself breathing hard as I dropped the weapon and struggled to take off the headset. It wouldn't budge. Is something the matter? Aren't you enjoying the game? Arthur's voice chimed in. This is real, you're hurting real people, I said desperately as I crawled under a table and tried to catch my breath. Every move I made in the virtual world was being mimicked somewhere in real life. I felt a knife at my back and I froze, but it wasn't from the game. Don't move, the voice whispered. I obeyed and waited as I felt them cut something at the back of my neck. A second later, the simulation ended and I was staring into the face of a blonde girl. What? What about the others? I asked anxiously. We need to get out of here, she instructed. I didn't hesitate to listen and jumped from the chair to leave the basement. I didn't see Arthur anywhere. Up at the main arcade, I felt a wave of relief wash over me and asked, who are you? How did you find me? Then she pointed a gun straight at my head. It's nothing personal. I just need to get into the game. She slammed the base of the weapon against my forehead, knocking me unconscious. I woke up in the back of a police cruiser handcuffed. The entire shady arcade was now being quarantined with police tape. I saw the same blonde girl working the homicide scene. The cop in the driver's seat started talking. We'd been watching this place for a few months now. Lots of victims get caught up in this game without knowing it. Lucky for us, when you logged online the first time, you didn't do it discreetly and let us right to it. 
My mouth felt dry as I realized I was likely responsible for a dozen deaths because of the arcade. I, I didn't know it wasn't real. She nodded as medical examiners brought the victims out of the basement. One was wearing a blue jumpsuit. It was the man I killed. I recognized his stained cigarette teeth immediately. The arcade owner? But if he was the victim, who was running the game, I wondered. Then I remembered Arthur. Have you arrested my employee from the arcade? I asked the cop. He gave me a hard look. You're joking, right? When we came back to lock this place down, the whole building was already empty. Someone knew we were coming. Whatever they were up to, they've taken their business elsewhere. I knew it wouldn't take much for another similar advertisement to pop up. I looked at the body bags and swallowed a gulp of air. I don't think I will play a game off the dark web again. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy these stories, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out some more of my episodes here.